Kelly Welton, K-E-L-L-Y-W-E-L-T-O-N. Okay, and you are, uh, when I put the key under you, are you English teacher? What, what do you teach? I teach English on two levels, grades, but three levels of students. I teach regular students on the junior level, I teach accelerated students on the junior level, and I teach sophomores who are, um, need help with reading, a little bit lower level. Gotcha. Okay. Um, let's start out, I guess, at the beginning. When, uh, how long have you been teaching here? How long have you been teaching in general? Uh, never have taught anywhere place else. This is my only place to teach, uh, 24 years at the end of this year, uh, excluding a child or two in there when I uh, took a maternity leave, but this will be my 24th year here. Love the place. Tell Love me, it. Tell me for somebody, you know, obviously I have, uh, but for somebody who's never stepped foot in here, explain this uh, school and the staff and the kids to somebody that's never seen it. This is, I'm a Vigo County resident and drive over here every day. And for reasons, we bought the house there before uh, really knowing if this was going to be the permanent job and so forth. This is a wonderful community. And so you see that expressed through the kids who come through the door. You have a wonderful foundation, foundation of adults who help with everything, uh, rearing other kids and actually participating with them inside the building, which I think is wonderful because a lot of times you think of the little kids needing it. And I think the high school kids enjoy it just as much when their parents participate. And so when you come in our building, I think we have a very friendly atmosphere that goes along with it. We have, um, the kids are very comfortable around us, and I think that helps them to understand that education is not intimidating. And so even if you go in town or you come out here, I just think you, it's a very friendly place to be. Um, what, I ask uh, your principal this question, but what, when they walk into your classroom, when somebody walks into your classroom, what are they gonna see? How would you describe your teaching style? I think my room is um, sometimes chaotic. Uh, I don't think I'm a complete traditional teacher. I think sometimes you have to be willing to give and take with the ebb and flow of what's going on that particular day. And that in the beginning was very difficult for me. I was very much, this is the lesson plan, we must follow it. And I found that the kids sometimes can't do that. And so if you walk in, I allow the kids to sit on the floor if they want to read from the floor rather than sit in the desks. The um, computer stations in my room make it very rigid sometimes. And that we need to get away from that feeling of everything is structured. And so I, I let them have a little bit more freedom. They can change seats from time to time. They can move around. And because I teach the different levels, there are times when I have thrown on uh, cheeseburger outfits and dressed up to, inter to introduce how to write. And I'm OK with that. I think if I make myself kind of s simple, funny, in the chaos, the kids then see that and they're like, well, if she can do it, then I can do it. And I think that then if I'm vulnerable, then they're at ease. And I think that helps. Um, I have rules and they know it. Don't cross the line and upset me. But at the same time, I know that they understand that they have anything and need to come to me. They can come to me and I'll help them out. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I know there's probably a group of people out there that would say, oh, high school kid. Why in the world would you <laughs> teach high school kids? So why in the world would you want to teach high school? I was lucky enough to do a cadet, I think it was called cadet program at Sullivan High School my senior year. And we went down to the elementary one hour a day and I got to teach second grade. And uh, my height alone, I thought was probably not gonna be very beneficial. I probably would see that I wanna be squatting in a little chair, which that's what they were. And I thought, I don't know if I can do this for a long period of time. And then I, you know, I thought, well, I don't wanna repeat the same question 22 times, so I'll do high school where I just repeat it 22 times seven hours a day rather than one hour a day. But I really like the humor and wit of the high school kids. They're easily intimidating. I, 24 years, I still have the same dream every August that they're going to revolt like an after school movie and they're going to hold up signs and pick it and leave me and they're going to say, no, we shall not. And and every year they come back. And every year I think this is the year, I don't know if I can do this. And they're really a fun group to work with. I have to say that 180 days a year, I get to spend with them. And that's so magical that you get to spend time with people who are the future. 
and I get to see them right before they cross that precipice into professionalism. And they're not seniors that I deal with. They're not tainted by what's coming. They're, they're so cool to be around. And I so appreciate that every day that I come in. Who else gets to say that? You know, Who else gets to say that I spend my day with the professionals of the future, the kids that are going to be my physicians and the kids that are going to be the receptionist that checks me in and the person who's going to weld my pipes and put my roof on my house and fix my car. I get them now, and that makes me feel so lucky in so many ways. Um, are there any stories over the years that, that you can think of that you can look at and say, you know, this is, this is why I'm doing this, or this is why I want to do this? I, will, I can say that in all the years I've done this, I have come in every year and been surprised that they have taught me something. You know, initially I thought my job was to teach them. And I found out that every year somebody taught me something that I had no idea was coming. And it might have been the toughest kid in the class. Ooh, there's some times when you're sitting there thinking, this one's going to be a challenge. And then at the end of the year, I think that's, I learned so much more from that person than I may have thought I had, was capable of, or was going to learn. And I love that aspect of it. So every year now, I think, what am, what's new? What's the mystery? What am I going to walk out of here and find? And so it's not one individual story. I've had great classes over the years, great groups of kids that I have had contact with that has been surprising what they've gone into or where they've gone. And I can tell you that um, one year at the end of the year, I had a group. This has been close to 10 years ago because I ran into him later. And I told him on the last day of school, don't get in trouble. Don't go to jail. And he ended up in trouble and ended up in jail. And I, I tried to contact him. I tried to get his dad and contact him. And this is before we had, um, I carried a phone and had all of that. And I ran into him at prom years later and he said, you were the one that I really worried about. I really worried that when I made the mistake that it would it'd get back to you and you would be disappointed in me. And so that's, and like, and I thought that's a lesson that I never saw coming, you know? And so that's the type of stuff I think, not always that extreme, but stuff like that that I think, wow, they did teach me something. Sure. What do you think are, uh, you already kind of touched on part of this, but um, what do you think? I know that there's a lot of struggles in education uh, right now. And uh, I guess what I want to know is what do you see as the biggest, um, struggle as a teacher in, and maybe the biggest reward? I would say that I think at the high school level we have the misconception that they all are very comfortable with their education and teaching lower level and upper, upper level at the same time. Rudimentary and elementary we start with the English and the math and we say one plus one is two, start with the, get through the, the sentence and you'll be fine. And a couple hours a day, I, I struggle with kids who struggle with reading. And if I can take off that intimidation factor so that they can learn, I think that helps them immensely. Can I get them to pass the ECA at this point? That's, that's a hard reality for many of them. We work as hard as we can with what we're given, but that's a, a, a huge, insurmountable obstacle to overcome for some of them and I and I worry about them that way um, <clears throat> I guess when you retire and you're no longer here what do you want your students to remember about you what do you want them to take away from your classroom I hope that they take away that there's a whole lot more than the literature I taught them I will I hope they understand the the humor and the connection to real life I spend a lot of time trying to read things from the past, but then making a connection to the present so that they see it. For example, we were talking about Shakespeare today and how the Globe Theater, the Globe Theater was moved from one location across the river to another. Well, then I showed the clip of the Amish family, the Amish community that 80 men picked the house up and moved the house. So if you can move the globe, you can move a house. And then they looked at it and they go, oh, so it is possible. And I think that's something I want them to understand. Literature is not time-based and locked in. Read it because of what it can give you the emotion back. And whether that's a Poe or that's a 1600 author or a current author, love what reading can do for you. Love literature. And if they get that and they understand that, that there's some humor along with it and there's some fun and enjoyment, that's how I'd like to be remembered. Think of about this program and, and kind of what it stood for. 
I think it's a nice way to highlight what we do in education in a positive way. Anyone who works in any field likes the accolades of someone saying, pat on the back, you've done a great job. And whether I were driving a tractor or driving a truck or doing this, if someone stops and says, what you do makes a difference, I think that speaks louder than, than uh, anything else. Yeah. And um, obviously the tradition here has been good <laughs> what's it mean to you to be a part of that now I mean you're on that list it's it's a little early to take it all in you know there's a part of me that when you walked in the room on Tuesday and talked to me I was still kind of in and I'm a I'm a very quiet person get me in my room I don't shut up but I'm a very quiet person about my life and my family and and so there's a part of me that kind of was like and I'm not quite out of the euphoric high to kind of digest it yet but it sure means a lot to me. Yeah. It sure means a lot to me. And what does it mean to you that someone took the time to sit down and nominate you? Oh, it's huge to think that there are so many people, by the time you get high school kids, if I were to reflect back, I had an incredible psychology teacher, sociology teacher when I was in high school. I had a wonderful senior comp teacher, and I had a wonderful fourth grade teacher. And that fourth grade teacher probably saved me that year because um, I was left-handed, we had to change how I wrote, I didn't like it, and he took the time with me. And I still reflect back on how he influenced my life and my choices. And I think these kids have so many people. And to take the time and think that I'm worthy, that just makes me feel incredibly special. Yeah, and um, you know, one of the teachers that I was talking to today at Turkey Run, he mentioned this is 25 years and there have been five teachers. Uh, a year. I mean, that's a small, I mean, it's a big yes. list, but it's a small list. Yes. I mean, what's it mean that your name's now in that, in that group? It's like the Hall of Fame of teachers, isn't it? It's really special to know that I'm in a group of people that I have looked up to for years when we've had people through the building, such as Bob Medworth and, and uh, the, the ones in the past few years. I just think they are doing an incredible job, and now suddenly I'm linked with them, and that makes me feel very special. Uh, let me think if there's anything else I need to add. Is there anything you'd like to add that I didn't ask you or anything that you think is important to, to get out there? I don't know. <laughs> Good night, I don't know. If there's anything else that I want to ask you. Uh, but I don't think there is. I think we're good. Uh, good. All right. I'll get you in